Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We're mashed in after a nice walk again this morning. We're mashed in before, well, just after nine o'clock, actually. Uh, you'll notice on that footage, if I kept all of it in, that I added some grain part way through. That's because I got two sacks of pale malt out and then I weighed out my specialty malts. I needed 20 kilograms out of a sack of pale malt as well and I forgot to put it in of course so I just put that in afterwards and uh, it took a little bit more mixing than normal but that mixing paddle that I made is really spot on barley batter machine it really gives you a nice um, homogenous mix and no um, dough balls what to speak of it's really quiet uh, and an arm saving device in the morning. I mean sometimes we do refer to the the old mash pad along on the wall there but very rarely do we have to do we have to do that. Right, so it's just a waiting game now, waiting for the mash to finish. So moving on to another subject while the brew brews I've been reflecting on rewiring the um cabling for the elements and I had this control panel in stock, which I initially bought for the pilot kit. And, well, it's way too big in size. In fact, if we just have a look at what it actually comes out at. So it's 400, which is 16 inches, by 600, which is 24, give or take. And the depth is a nice 200 mil deep. So I'm thinking that while we have the existing control panel out here, which has been rewired more times than I care to remember, I'm thinking we can move a lot of this into a new panel with DIN rail kind of mounts for everything inside rather than I mean just look how busy that is and I've done bodge jobs and all sorts to it in the past and also I'm getting a little bit of electromagnetic feedback there we go look and that's from the cables not being shielded so yeah that's very odd isn't it it's just reading the temperature up at a silly number can you see it that it's not that high, it's just about 100 degrees. So I'm thinking we rewire this, we change out all these cables that are carrying signals for the PT100s or whatever I've got in there and we'll use shielded cable so we don't get any interference and uh, just upgrade it all. I want to pull everything off this wall treat the wall because it's terribly damp maybe put something up there to cover it I don't know just to make it look a little bit more presentable because this is the worst wall in the building actually because there are outhouses built against it on the other side therefore it gets a lot of moisture ingress so I just tend to let it run down the wall so the plan is we pull everything out of that old C panel we can use a lot of the PIDs. It's got Rex C100s on it, believe it or not. I wouldn't necessarily use the Rex C100s. I believe, if we have a look around here, oh, we're we going to get in there now. Who's put that there? I believe I've got some different panel. Um, mount things that's a 24 volt alarm so instead of having that big 12 volt power supply in there I could change everything out to a 24 volt panel mount or 12 volt I could easily order some more um, panel lamps I don't think I've got many in stock these are all relays which I keep as spares because they are consumables 
and sometimes you have a long wait from China so I buy a lot of them in so we're all sitting on a bit of stock yeah you see there's a lot of things that we could use to upgrade the system here's an example we could use maybe not that type but some different connectors for all of the signal cables coming in for instance at the minute they're just all stuffed through a gland at the side of the panel which I'm not overly enthused about to be fair it'd be much nicer wouldn't it to have everything wired up with a proper plug of some type I've got all sorts of stuff in here look that's I don't know what half of this is some of it's been sent to me that looks like signal cable of some type but yeah at the minute I've got power supplies like this inside that panel and I don't necessarily want them in there I'd prefer to use DIN rail mounted power supplies and then we could also change out the uh, 240 distribution to these little fellas I like these these little like chocolate blocks but they do a better job you can mount them a little bit better here's another alarm what's this that is 24 volt DC we've got some panel indicators in here look so these are that's 12 volts AC DC you see yeah get rid of all this kind of junk in there I don't like these anymore and then change things out for proper there we go a couple of switches these will be fine you see for signal cables so we're gonna have like one of them would be 12 volt for the float switch for the PIDs the other one 12 volt for the PI, uh, for the PT100 well, uh, yeah, that's four of them that'll do so that would basically be the input on the bottom of the panel and then I've got all sorts of stuff shooting out of the side of it such as my pumps they're all powered in there so of course we've got these sensitive electrical signals coming from the PT100s and what have you and then we've got power cables coming out of the panel which are carrying 240 to pump motors which are inductive loads and of course those inductive loads cause feedback on the cables and yeah make a bit of a mess uh, of the signal so I think we'll just do it all in this new box separate everything lay it all out nicely just lay that down so I don't knock it over and I think this is plenty big enough for everything we're going to need to mount in it what do you think loads of space a couple of din rails around here somewhere get rid of the old um, relay contact a relay and change it out for a modern one that sits on a din rail just upgrade everything really I think it's a good move and just tidy the whole thing up and make it oh, I also want to put some fast acting fuses as well in front of the solid state relays so yeah we can protect them a little bit although I shouldn't need to um, I think what caused that failure was the capacitance of the cables creating a fault current on the switching of the solid state relay so it was switching it too fast or randomly and the zero crossing so I don't know whether that has an effect in making them blow up or not but one certainly blew up so there we are and then we can gland all of the cables out at the bottom here we could house the heat sinks inside and then just put one ventilation port on the edge I don't know thinking outside the box what I'm gonna do inside the box there we are but that's definitely a project for another day but while I'm at it if I'm gonna do it I might as well do it right transfers almost complete 
nice and clear. So I've been having a look upstairs. Let me get away from this noise a little bit. I've been up in the office, up there, having a look at fittings for this uh, control panel. And I'd like to reutilize, not necessarily these fittings, but the ones that are pretty similar but waterproof that I did use. I wonder if I've got one knocking about in here. I did use them on the pilot kit build and they are like little plastic connectors. This is just my junk drawer. All sorts of jazz in there. Look at that capacitor. Mm, can't see them. But I'm looking on CPC anyway, or Farnells, whatever you want to call them. Same company, I think. And they look like pretty good connectors and uh, relatively splash proof. Not that that gets wet around there anyway. Uh, as, uh, 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 along with, along with. Well, all the other connectors and everything else, which I'm trying to do off the back of my head. Hey, and they also sell panel indicators for about £1.50 a piece. No need to buy those Chinese ones. You can get them from a UK supplier. So, anyway, it's too cold to be sat in the brewery and putting heating on in that. Well, it's an absolute waste of time. So I'm just waiting for this transfer to finish. Then I'm going to go home and do it there. It is... A lot colder today than it was yesterday, even though there was no ice this morning when I went to walk the dogs.